Mr. Chairman, sir, I rise to support the surrogacy bill 2009 and at the same time I compliment the Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare for bringing about this historic landmark bill which seeks to regulate surrogacy services in the country by banning commercial surrogacy and allowing only altruistic and ethical surrogacy. So, according to a study conducted in 2012 by the CII, the size of India's surrogate motherhood industry was that of $2 billion per year. India had emerged as a major surrogate hub. There have been several reports of exploitation of surrogate mothers who were treated little better than slaves, at times forced into surrogacy, confined to inhuman living conditions, not being allowed to meet their relatives, not being given proper nourishment, and lastly, being paid negligible amounts for their reproductive labor. There were also instances of abandonment of children. This bill seeks to prohibit exploitation of surrogate mothers and the children born thereof. So I would like to quote the words of Johannes Brahms, the famous German composer, pianist, conductor of the Romantic period, who said, the only true immortality lies in one's children. Is this the reason for the craving of children and for going in for progeny through the method of surrogacy? The fear that we will be forgotten lest we leave behind our successors. Now, so that may partly be true, but those of us who have enjoyed the joys of parenthood realize that there is much, much more. To quote an article in the Tribune which said, procreation is not just about furthering the family lineage, it is about succession, tradition and legality. It is about putting a biological system in place. It is about keeping the balance of nature. So in our country, which is still relatively conservative, it is one of the major reasons why parents tend to pressurize their children into marriage. So childbearing is a very integral part of our system. The surrogacy bill, regulation bill 2016, after its introduction in this August House had been referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health and Family Welfare in January 2017. The Standing Committee held various meetings with the various stakeholders and came up with some remarkable recommendations. They tabled their report after their due diligence and laid their report in both Houses of Parliament in August 2017. Some of their recommendations were very realistic and worth adopting. So when a law or a bill like this is brought into Parliament, it should be realistic, pragmatic and difficult to circumvent. In India, we have noticed that there's always a plan B to circumvent the law. <laughs> also, sir, the genuinely needy should benefit from it. Otherwise, it tends to enter the underground market, which will not only be risky for the surrogate mother, the intending, intended parents and the child. I welcome the establishment of national and state surrogacy boards. So I would like to draw the attention of the Honourable Minister on a few important clauses. Firstly, under Chapter 3, the regulation of surrogacy and surrogacy procedures. Clause 4, 
says that no surrogacy or procedure shall be conducted, undertaken, performed or availed of except for the following purposes namely when either or both members of the couple are suffering from proven infidelity. So I request you to widen the scope of its applicability. There are other reasons besides fertility for inability in conception. For example, congenital absence of a uterus or a hysterectomy or just the inability of the uterus to carry the fetus to term. It should be a valid medical reason. Also the standing committee had recommended that due to this infertility in both partners, the intending parents, uh, it may not be possible to have the gametes donated by the parents. But sir, my humble submission is that there is no mention of an egg or sperm donor in the bill. Hence, you may kindly incorporate this in the bill, sir. Secondly, sir, as regards the five-year waiting period, it's too long and violates the right to reproductive autonomy. The standing committee's re recommendation was that the definition of infertility should conform to the WHO standard. That means after one year of married life, if there is no conception, then after that the couple should be considered infertile. So, there is another problem that in our conservative system, a five-year wait may lead to divorce or second marriages, thereby also bringing about a change in our social fabric. And if the, like nowadays, where both parents are working, they are going in for further education, if they married, get married at a later age, and if this five-year mandatory period is in place, then by the time, the time for reproduction comes, they may be well over the age of, over the reproductive age. So thirdly, under the bill, the surrogate should be a close relative of the intending couple. We need to specify what is meant by close relative. Indian society, as we all know, is patriarchally dominated. It is conservative. And this could lead to a new set of domestic violence issues where women are compelled and coerced against their will to become surrogates within the family. So we'll have a new issue of social evils like dowry and other things which were there in the past. It would become a new uh, area of exploitation. And so what about in cases where the couple has married against the wishes of their family, married out of their caste, community or religion, where do they find close relatives to act as surrogates, sir? So, uh, in this bill we do believe in altruism and philanthropy, but society is not utopian. We are dealing with human element, elements, sir, and more often than not, over property inheritance issue, if there is a couple which is not being able to conceive children, I think most of the other members of the family are very happy. So leave alone acting as surrogates for the close family members, sir. So this is, the bill limits the scope of the eligibility criteria, sir. I would request the Honourable Minister to widen the scope to members of the LGBT community, to widows, to divorcees, and to overseas citizens of India, persons of Indian origin. This is all I had to say. Thank you very much, sir.